You live only ten minutes away, but probably never wondered about the significance of the rather hidden house titled The Hermitage. You know it's there, but its significance in history and to the ideals of the community and to the United States are rather obscure. Well, you have been missing out on one of the most fascinating and historical artifacts in the history of the United States. Today on 60 Minutes, we will explore just what has been so underappreciated in this community as our crew was able to personally tour the Hermitage and interview one of its very own volunteers. Come along and let's find out just what you've been missing. Driving through the small town of Ahokus, New Jersey, it's easy to get wrapped up in the modern aspects of the town. However, when you look around, you find that there's a lot of history here, a highlight of which is the Hermitage Museum. Located on historic Franklin Turnpike, this museum memorializes Hohokus' revolutionary past and the town's role in the success of the new American nation. It also informs visitors of the pre-revolutionary state of the area, as well as the events that occurred here after the revolution. Perhaps more important than the actual history it displays is the role the Hermitage plays in the Hohokus community. In a time where many nearby buildings dating back as far as the Hermitage are being destroyed for new construction or are in a state of disrepair, the Hermitage stands as a symbol of the community's desire to be mindful of the past. It provides residents with a way to learn about past events in a hands-on manner. Additionally, it displays the modern value of multifunctionalism, opening its doors to everything from children's birthday parties to professional development seminars for history teachers. Before the Hermitage was built, the land was where the Hackensacks, a group of the Lanai Lenape natives, hunted and fished. The land then belonged to the Dutch, before being conquered by the English. Fast forward to the July of the year 1778. The Continental Army is returning from the Battle of Monmouth with intentions to make headquarters at the Paramus home of Lydia Watkins. However, what was supposed to be a restful stay abridged into only a supper. Washington's aide, Dr. James McHenry, wrote, After leaving the falls of the Passaic, we passed through fertile country to a place called Paramus. We stopped at a Mrs. Watkins, whose house was marked for headquarters, but the general receiving a note of invitation from a Mrs. Provost to make her hermitage, as it was called, the seat of his stay while at Paramus, we only dined with Mrs. Watkins and her two charming daughters, who sang us several pretty songs in a very agreeable manner. Washington accepted this invitation, and the Continental Army temporarily inhabited the hermitage, making it one of the premier historical developments in the state of New Jersey. But, let's dig deeper. Let's discover exactly what this artifact presents about this community and the essence of history as a whole. Let's take a closer look. After touring the Hermitage, our team at 60 Minutes had the opportunity to speak with Hermitage docent and respected member of the Northern Highlands community, Mr. Healy, about just what makes the Hermitage a significant reflection of not just the history of this community, but of its traditions, values, and attitudes. What values do the Hermitage present about our community? Well, the values for the current community is, 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 is an important look into the past. The ability to connect with the families and the struggles that they went through and the, and the successes that they had back in the 1700s and the 1800s. So it's important to hold on to as many historical things as possible. And that's why that they have both the, the, the United States and the state Question two: What procedures were taken to restore and preserve the Hermitage? Well, it's been it's been a project of close to fifty years. Mm -hmm. um, it's an all volunteer. So the that group that was having a celebration today was was uh, a gardening group that's been doing uh, that's been doing work for, for over twenty years. Um, I myself am, am a volunteer docent. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that spearheads the change, but without the support of the community, the things wouldn't really happen. The, uh, they have fundraisers and things like that. But it is an ongoing project, so picture your property of maybe half an acre 
and then multiply that to five acres and realize that there's things that you don't necessarily see that have to be done each and every day. This place is always busy with people. Question three. What do you find to be the most compelling feature of the Hermitage? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I am more, uh, I enjoy the historical connection. The fact that, that, that Theodosia Peoples was able to solicit the support of those soon to be famous Americans and they were famous already. Um, you know, I think that's 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 of lots and lots of interest. I also kind of find uh, one of the questions I you know that I'm often asked is um, you know are there any ghosts? Uh, and I can tell you this much: um, the answer is no, not documented. But um, because it's old old property, there are people who have come here, gotten to the front door, and said they came. From there are students who have come here, gotten inside, and become very uncomfortable and asked to leave. Um, who knows? But I mean, I just, I, I, I appreciate, I, not that the Gothic revival um, is, is lost on me, but I really I enjoy the historical aspect of it. Question four, what motivates you to work in this facility? Well, as I said, this is something that I, that I choose to do um, as a volunteer. I could be at the weight room right now. Right. <laughs> However, um, but they gave me a call. I work with students during during the day, um, a couple times a month. But more importantly, it's just something that I, you know, I want to give a little something back to the community. You know, my background was in was in history, right. you know, as a teacher. So I, I you know, and there are lots of volunteers. And there's never a shortage. Final question: What was the primary motivation for the restoration of the Hermitage? Well, I think if you go back to that 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 beginning um, question, uh, the family wanted the Hermitage to be preserved, but they had no means. The state wasn't sure what to do or how it could be done, so they took they accepted the Hermitage, the house and property, as a gift, but without the support of the friends of the Hermitage, it, this would not exist today. Um, people want very much especially you know my generation and I hopefully your generations will want to hold on to the past and what better way to celebrate the past than to than to, 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 to create these spaces um, and they're located throughout the country you know and it would be it would be advice well taken that when you're out and about you know doing things that you, know, you just look into to the, the possibility of these kind of historic places. I mean, think about you live no more than five to ten minutes away, probably never visited, never even gave it a thought. Um, we're trying to get more school groups in. There's a great partnership with the Jersey City Schools and United Water. United Water sponsors the, uh, pays for, for the visits and uh, hundreds of kids from Jersey City and fourth graders come every year and they look forward to coming back every year with their teachers. That's right. After our tour of the house and the five acres that remain of the original grounds, we came to a number of interesting revelations that shed light onto the meaning of the hermitage in the modern community. One of these revelations we reached came when we learned that the house was one of the first in the area to be equipped with central heat, as well as having many Gothic-style structures that were both practical and enhanced the feel of the house for guests. Although later residents would be slow in adapting to the new technology of the 1900s, the early residents kept their home as new and as modern as possible. This value of wanting to keep things new and attain cutting edge technology is still very present in the Hohokus community and in the surrounding North Bergen area. From this connection, we can see that one of the purposes of preserving the hermitage was and is to remind us of the values of the past that we see as beneficial to us in the here and now. Another of these values that has been passed down from the early days of the Hermitage to the modern North Bergen community was the high value placed on education. Inside of the main house of the Hermitage, there are many workspaces and places for family members to read and write as the well-educated people of the early United States did. Additionally, there were multiple pieces of documentation that certified the high level of education attained by the family members such as the diploma received by Elijah Rosencrantz that hangs proudly above the desk in the main office. The idea that education is very important 
is one that has been a key in the success of the nation and continues to be so today. Another revelation came after seeing the separate office entrance, where people coming solely to do business would enter the house as opposed to the main guest entrance. Additionally, we saw that there were other clear separations between work and leisure, exemplified by the desk in the master bedroom that was for personal letters and reading only, and never for work. These two parts of the house show a value of our forefathers that work should not be placed in front of family and leisure, or at least that the two should be kept separate. In the modern world where cell phones are on us at all times and we can get a work email or call at any time, the hermitage is preserved as a reminder that this is not the only way, and that there are certain values of the past that could still be relevant and beneficial in the present. Thank you for watching.